Good evening, Eternum. War correspondent John Chalant here, live from the front line. I've covered a lot of wars in the last year and a half on the island, but I've noticed that not everyone is fully prepared for combat. With that in mind, I've reached out to a special guest who has volunteered their time to go over some war basics for the community at large. For some of you, this may be old news, but for many new refugees to the island, this information could very well save your life. We now go live to our special War Basics tutorial, presented by our friend of the show and LARPCO intern, Hachi Bra. All right, yeah, so, like, again, from the lamest term, like, I've been in a couple fights, but not fighting, obviously, because I'm doing the War Correspondent's perspective. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, and I've seen a lot of fights, because obviously I've been watching this game as it developed over the last year and a half. And uh, getting into Fort Face, it seemed like that was going to happen. The way you guys were going around on the outside, um, that was going to happen. But once you got into Fort Face, it looked like there was a lot of choke management going on there. But still, even then, it looked like you had two solid attempts to get the flag going. But there was no follow-up yeah. on the first... on The one big push, it just didn't look like there was enough follow-up on the big push. Yeah, so I, I would say, if you're gauging a war, right? Mm -hmm. um, if If... The attacking team gets to fort phase, meaning they capture all three points by 20 minutes. It's going to be a competitive war. 20 minutes to go. Yeah. If if it if they don't get into fort until 15 minutes, the offenders like the offense has unless you absolutely throw your fort phase, the offense has almost zero chance of winning because the amount of time it takes to run to the point from fort versus spawning. Whenever you capture, like let's say. They always throw, basic war strategy is you throw one of the side points, right? You don't right, have enough sure. people, you get spread too thin, so you throw either A or C, depending on the map. Right, okay? right away you want to get into a 2-1-2 two, two kind of... Correct. Right, yeah. And then the worst case scenario for your army is you lose the other side point. So let's say you throw A, and then you lose C. That's your worst case scenario. Because, because then B they can is spawn. too short. The, the, you can spawn from either side, so you have no way to oh, defend yeah. either side, right? Because like, if they split the army and they're crashing at you from both ends, you really don't have a back line anymore. Right, you can't put your uh, back up against a wall, as it were. Right, exactly. So um, if, it's, if it seems like in that war specifically that you just watched, we had so much pressure on B that they said, Larko. throw B, we're not even going to worry about it, we're just going to hold down this side point because if we lose both, we're cooked, or if we lose C, we're going to lose B anyways. So B is, has, has enough pressure, we're just going to give it up. Just give it up and everyone come to C and we'll all sit here, A, whatever it was, the last point, right? Right. Um, and then if you're looking at my stream right now, I am. so if, if you're a defender, right, and this is your last point, mm -hmm. you have two two big areas you want to try to control. Oh, you're in on, the, you're in on our... Um... On El Dorado, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I just swap back. So um, this is our this is this call out would be our road, okay? Mm -hmm. Like right. if you're the defender, if you're an offender, it's their road, right? Right. And yeah. So their road would be there. further down in the distance. There's bonfire, and then there's... correct. And then you have bond, and then this this call right here. This is either oppo bond or cold side. Like get it like a bonfire, bonfire is hot, and cold. Yeah. This is cold, right? So oppo bond or cold are pretty synonymous. If you're gonna be making content for East players, they specifically only call it oppo bond. Whereas West Coast players will understand cold side. The opposite bond versus, okay, mm -hmm. oppo bond, gotcha. Yep. Um, so, like, if we're on defense here, what we are looking to hold is we're looking to hold our road. So we want all of our ranged and dex players holding this spot. And the reason that you want them to hold this spot is if the offensive team gets control of this area right here, uh, they can cut off your response. Yeah. Your response have to run through them, so then you're in a really bad spot. But the worst thing that you can lose control of as a defending company is the oppo bond side. So if you lose, if if the off the offense takes over this area of the map and pushes you into road, they win the point. Because now you don't have any backline, right? This is where all your healers are setting up for defense because everyone's spawning here and here, right? Yeah, because oppo so, bond is the side that's op bonfire is on the inner side of the map. Correct, and so right. it, this is this is going to be the opposite side of the respawns, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can get your team through here and you can control this and you can shove them into their road, then you're hitting them from here and you're hitting them from here and they're basically funneled back, right? Anyone caught in here is going to die. Which is what so, I saw you doing up on their ramparts trying to push them right. into it. Yeah. They had they had all of their bows. We had pushed them from this side over to this side and we were trying to funnel them up and get clear them out and once we clear out their bows we have free real estate to crash in and wipe everybody else right as a right. as a light melee that's my biggest concern is ranged so once we got their ranged out we were able to 
collapse and win point. Um, from there, point phase has been going a little... Or not point phase, but fort phase has been going a little differently lately. So the old school way of taking the fort is you would run up with your entire Zerg, whichever the last point is, right? Because that's where the majority of your army is. And go for those, go for the one-two push real fast on the first take. So yeah, you're going to have your whole army. A, uh, horns or anything? Right, so you have your whole army take out this gate while the ranged players, all ranged players, focus horns. Because horns give you uh, fortify, basically. Right. right? You take less damage. So the ranged players focus that. The whole army Zergs this gate. And then you're going to have different teams assigned to each gate. Typically, it's like two teams. So let's say teams seven and eight are assigned to this gate. They're going to stay there, and we're going to drop them off. And then the whole army is going to rotate to B gate. Same thing. Range are mm -hmm. going to take down horns. We're going to take down the B gate. And then groups one and two are going to stay at the B gate. So you're and just spending like two to off. three minutes to clear off horns, and you're dropping off your, your assigned you're, task people at those gates to keep them busy while you preserve, prepare yourself at the gates. Correct, 100%. Yeah, okay, I'm and following so you. That's, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> that, that's the standard push. Uh, lately, what people have been doing is they've been sending the main Zerg to whichever gate. So if the main Zerg crashes this gate right off the gate, this is our last point, and they come crash this gate, what people have been doing is they've been sending two groups to the other side to instantly take down uh, the opposite side all the way over there. They've been sending two groups that way to take down the gates and create that instant pressure that they're not ready for. So the main Zerg would go in to whatever, whatever gate is right there closest, and they'll send Correct. two groups to go flank the other one, like a swing pass. Right, and so basically they're going to hit both gates at the same time. A majority of their army is going to be caught outside fighting or dying or guarding this gate, and then you're going to get that pressure on the opposite side for free. So that's what a lot of people have been doing, and then they'll take their main, their main B-gate groups to this point. Typically, the B-gate groups are your two best bruisers, like your two best bruiser groups and some sword and shields for the defense and just survivability. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll see, like, Whirlwhip. He's probably the best bruiser on the server. He's going to come to this are you gate. flagged? <laughs> yeah. He's going to come to this gate, and he's going to basically... This is where the biggest fights happen and the most pressure, right? Because if you don't send your best groups to this point... It's the closest to it, right? So if B gate goes down and their your group wipes, the whole army has free entry onto the point. Okay. Right. Yeah. And um, it's the shortest path, so I would imagine they'd want to, you know, right. there on defense. So you usually slot your best players as your as your point groups. Uh, your point groups will be usually groups one and two on the roster. They're going to be the groups that survive inside the point and during point phase, and then they're going to be the groups that go to B gate. Your during... bruiser groups that are shield wall and. Right, and your best now. bruisers. So right. you have your, you have like typically at least one sword and shield, and your best bruisers and those two groups, and they're in a big ten man like communications group, so they can talk to each other, and coordinate their stuff together. Once uh once you get through, let's say we take down all gates. Typically you'll have one medium group at each back gate, right? So um they're gonna go blow up each door. The kill squad's job right now is to get up above B gate because what they're doing is uh. With all the fire staffs in the meta, they're slotting uh, these fire staffs. They get above B gate and they're just raining down damage on the rest of everybody else. On both sides so, of the wall, right? Right. So what we were trying to do that whole time unsuccessfully was gain control of B gate so that we can get their fire staffs down and start getting them to pump damage. Sorry, I got to kill this kid real quick. No, I got you. He won't leave me alone. Oops, I got hit by a javelin. That's what you hate to see. <laughs> it's sticking out of you. Let's see. We're still up big, though. Yeah, we got him. That might have been the difference. Oh, there's a pot. Oh, there's a stun. That should be about it. Oh, That's he used his ability. Form. Wow, already? He's committed to this. I don't think We're he realizes he's in over his top. Yep. Oh, there's another poet. Oh, the sweep is tough, but he's he's he just stamlocked himself. We get this if we hit him here. Nope. Stamlocked. Yeah, so... Uh, that's anytime someone uses their stamina all the way so yep. they can't dodge anymore. That's called a stam lock. That's usually the deciding factor in a fight or a duel. Yeah, because then they won't be able to dodge out of your big bangers. Right. You can use your all your big cooldown. Like right now he's stam locked. He's going to die here. Oh, well, we game was glitched. Oh. So sometimes the game will lie to you and it'll tell you that they're stam locked and they're not. It's pretty cheese, but it is what it is. The bows are tough to catch. There's the sweep. The bows are tough to catch because they have built-in haste on all of their rolls. But right now I'm stam locked, so I'm in kind of a peculiar spot here. Ooh. Okay, so back to what I was saying. 
Oh, you're not going to grab um, this bag? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so, no tea bag or nothing? That was very noble of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got bigger things to worry about than that. Dingus. Yeah, we're in the middle of an educational experience here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the back gates, uh, if they can get up, they're going to try to get up here, and they're going to try to build a presence. They're going to try to get as many of their group people up here as they can. Offense. So that they can, so, yeah, on offense, so that they can come down and push the B gate. Um, above because they, we, this mm -hmm. is our biggest thing is right now in this meta we have to clear this a whole area out because the so, fire staff union is on top correct so we're going to get as many dex players and range players as we can all of our light groups up either straight up to b if it's clear or up to these sides on either side so that we can start pressuring them with ranged and then push in together to to create that pressure to get them off of this area um if we can do that and our main ball can get in, we're in a good spot. Now, when our main ball gets in, we don't run straight to point. Like, if you get in through this gate, you don't just want to run straight to point and crash. What you want to do is you want to try to take up as much space as possible. So we want to control uh, th this. just a couple call-outs for here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did so notice that. There's a lot of that going on. Sometimes, like, uh, early in the game, I would lose my... I would get on it too soon. I'd be like, all right, let's crash, let's go. Because And sometimes that might be the way to go. But I do mm -hmm. see that the skirmish happens inside often for a long time before the decision is made to go on to the point. Right. So um, so a couple call-outs. This is called hell. The I, reason it's called hell is if you spawn here and the other enemy army has pressure, you're basically stuck in a giant cluster of grav wells and death. So yeah. this is called hell. This is called stage. And then this would be like uh, B stage, this, and D stage, and E stage, right? Basically, so and then top E, top D, or top D, top E, mm -hmm. um, you know, top A, top whatever, top B, top C. Um, but this is this is stage. This is hell. This is dirt. So this would be A dirt and C dirt. Um, so like dirt. sometimes. You, and Joe Dirt, exactly. So yeah, you'll hear you'll hear like comms like, okay, we have pressure. Once the, once we have pressure, this is the best thing for my class. When we have pressure, I get really excited because now I can jump down into dirt and start getting free kills because they're so <laughs> pressured out by our bruisers that Who I can doesn't just come like here. free kills. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's just it's just free pressure for me to come in there and drop all my damage and not worry about dying. So um, our our main ball's goal is to take up dirt, control dirt. And then push up and control hell and respawns. So mm -hmm. if it, like if if our whole army has pressure up here, um, what we'll do is like as soon as we have pressure and we start wiping, okay, now we're taking point and it's a real point tick. So there's false point tick and real point tick. False point tick is people are pushing through and we're fighting here, but we really don't have pressure on either side of the dirt. We don't have pressure in hell. We don't have pressure in stage. So uh, it's 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 basically a false tick. Right, and it's showing um, like 10, 25 percent, but nothing's really yeah. really happening. But we don't have the numbers to control anything. And that's what we had in that war is we had false tick. We didn't really get any pressure through here to where we controlled the dirt on either side. Um, so we'll try to control dirt. And then as soon as we control dirt and we're starting to tick, okay, now we're ticking uh, and they're about to respawn. We'll call respawns are coming up. The the ice gauntlets will ice. Ice walls everywhere. Ice, wall, ice walls on the yeah, floor. Nobody's allowed they'll, in. <laughs> they'll ice wall the stairs. So that they either have to jump to dirt where we control, or they have to jump into hell where we control. It's because they're going to spawn either in hell or on stage. They're going to spawn somewhere up here or down right. here. So we're going to ice wall their their free path down, and they either have to jump here or jump down here, which is where we have a lot of presence, right? Um, and if we, if we control dirt on both sides, uh, they can't guard the gates anymore. We're flooding in for free. And then we're controlling their respawns. If you get to that point, you're up big. Uh, some big, some big time to think about, like or like as far as like the war going on and progressing and the the clock running down. Typically in a competitive war, there, what happens is is all the respawns are at the same time, right? So at the start of the war, mm -hmm. it's like every ten seconds there's a respawn. So if you die, it's not a big deal, right? Um, yeah, when you by get to the 10 end, minutes, it's like 40 seconds, almost a minute long. Right. Yeah. So at 10 minutes, that's when you can really start, unless you're absolutely dominating them. At 10 minutes, that's when you can start looking to control point, and that's when your kills have a long enough respawn time to make a difference. Yeah. So if you get into the fort by 20 minutes, that means that you're pretty evenly matched. And if nothing happens in the next 10 minutes, it's not a big deal because their respawns, they have such an advantage inside the fort that For it doesn't really here, matter. Yeah. They, got, they right. don't even have to walk anywhere. They're here. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. you. But once 10 minutes hits, that's when we really start to look for us getting control of dirt and point. So uh, that the from 10, 
to 20 minutes, it's kind of just a farm wash. Maybe you get a point, maybe you don't. It's not a big deal. No one's really stressing that we're not mm-hmm. making any progress. But at 10 minutes, if we, st- if we don't start making progress at around 10 minutes, that's when it, it gets kind of dire straits for us. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the, the basics of, of, of strategy right now. That's, that's a pretty solid strategy. That's in line with a lot of what I already knew, and I appreciate you giving me the details of what's going on in the skirmish inside because I didn't always realize what was going on. I knew that the spawn timers like impacted mm-hmm. a lot of the, the difference in the, in the final moments for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you, while you're running around up here, how do you find the, the new respawn locations impacting the, those decision-making processes now? As far as inside the fort? Yeah, like the, the defense can now spawn right up here, right? Up on top. Um, I haven't seen too many people spawning up here. I've seen people spawning at the shop still. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't noticed like a huge difference as far as like, uh, inside the fort, uh, used to spawn or I, used, I noticed that used to spawn over here a lot more. Right. So your strategy of pressing up doesn't work quite as well, but at the end of the day, um, if you can control dirt on either side, it doesn't really matter yeah. where you spawn. I don't think people are spawning directly up top. At least I have never spawned up here yet. Um, I've only spawned down here or across at stage or in hell, but, um, either yeah. way, if I spawn and their enemy has control of dirt, there's nowhere for me to go. Right. Um, it's I just like controlling road outside, right? You're keeping them from getting to the point in the first place. Correct. Exactly. It's just like controlling road. Uh, if you control dirt, you're up huge. Um, and that, I would say that's basically the, the basic breakdown of how war strategy, as far as outside, inside, as far as timing goes, what you're looking to control. Um, hey, while you're I'll, sitting there next to that tower, give us a little tech around the tower. A little, little <laughs> okay. bonus tech for old JC here. I got you. So um, <laughs> this side doesn't work. Oh, really? Um, you, it's only certain towers work? Mm-hmm. And uh, as far as this tech goes, I wouldn't. I don't want to share all of it. Okay, I this just, is behind for, for the, the scenes. Screen. Nobody gets to see yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just okay. you and me. If anybody wants to see this, they need to mm-hmm. click and subscribe to Hutchie's channel and That's go right. check him out on Twitch whenever you see him there. <laughs> I'm going to so, advise people go check him out on YouTube as he develops his YouTube channel. Hutchie, yeah, thanks I for sharing your time it. with me today. I sure do appreciate it. Yeah, no worries, John. Of course.